on instant recall as part of the FDA regulations that you need to adhere to. So when it comes to compliance reporting, we've really got our act together. Uh, not only can we give you an instant lot recall within four minutes uh, or less, where the FDA requirement I think is four hours, but we also can take your HACCP plans, so your ability to, to identify and avoid any critical control points, uh, document those in the product and keep an audit trail. Uh, the electronic signatures necessary to change formulations or to enact uh, significant financial transactions that affect your bottom line, uh, all of those things are built into the product, and we'll see some of that as we go through the demonstration today. Additionally, we know that whether it's the raw materials that you're receiving, the production batches that you're producing, or for those of you who have cosmetics, even the stability test that you need to run after product ships out the door, quality control is a big part of your life. And so as we talk about Batchmaster today and in the months going forward, uh, we want you to understand that quality control permutates itself throughout the product. Uh, finally, we'll look uh, very briefly at some nutritional labeling today. Batchmaster actually does three types of significant labeling for a food manufacturer, nutritional labeling. For a, uh, a nutraceutical vendor, we do uh, ingredient statements, and then also for cosmetics manufacturers, we'll do statements as well. So uh, in today's demonstration, we're going to see just the nutritional labels, but just know that you can get the ingredient statements and the facts panels out of the products as well, in whatever format you need to report it. So some of the distinct requirements that we're very sensitive to when we implement Batchmaster, number one, we know you have a formula or a recipe. That is an intellectual property which you need to securely maintain. You need to be able to go back and look at the different versions, the different variations, which customers receive those formulas. But again, yet that information needs to be secure. We will provide you with that security and level of confidence in Batchmaster. Second of all, we understand that raw materials have different physical characteristics, and that those physical characteristics actually vary on a lot-by-lot -lot basis. So that as we go through Batchmaster, you'll receive lots into the product, lots of raw materials. Those raw materials will be earmarked with physical properties. Those physical properties will then permutate into formulation and production. And when I go to make a production batch of product, I'm going to understand the nutritional facts or the ingredients that go into that product and understand exactly what I'm producing and the values of those physical properties once I produce. <clears throat> now, some of the other things that a Batchmaster customer finds very important to their needs, the fact that within Batchmaster, we know that different units of measure are applied at different levels within your organization. And when I say levels, what do I mean? Well, I purchase raw materials, typically from the United States, Canada, and China. And if I buy from the United States, I'm going to buy large bat, I'm going to buy large bulk items. I'm going to buy in 250-pound super sacks. I'm going to buy liquids in 55-gallon drums. Uh, but at the same time, I can source that same material from China or from Canada, and I need to turn around and look at that in liters instead of gallons. I need to look at it in uh, kilos instead of pounds. And the ability to toggle within the system is very important. Now, when I go to production, let's say I do nutraceutical manufacturing, I now need to look at everything in milligrams because milligrams is the gold standard for everything that's produced in nutraceuticals. So because the system has a purchase unit of measure, a stock unit of measure, and let's say I sell that in a 100-count bottle, a sales unit of measure, I need to be able to toggle between those units of measure at any time in the product, and that's something inherent to Batchmaster that most systems have a hard time getting their arms around. As you progress along with your sales reps, and I believe your sales reps are on the phone with you today, as well as our sales management group, we're going to make available to you these case studies. And these case studies are usually two to three pages on individual customers who closely match what it is that you're looking to accomplish. And so as you provide us with your requirements, we'll try and match you up with somebody in the industry who's really successful with Batchmaster and has the ability to relate and talk to you as you progress in the sales cycle about what it is that they've done and what it is that they've accomplished. So if we look at superior quality foods, um, we, we really did some extra legwork for them in taking the unit of measure conversion to the next level. 
So here's an organization that buys primarily spices. And those spices come to them in anything from uh, a five-pound sack to a 250-pound uh, super sack. And when Batchmaster arrived, we found that an individual raw material typically was in three or four different places in raw material inventory, opened up and sitting there, and they really had no way to make sure that they were using uh, uh, a FIFO methodology or a last, uh, nearest to expire methodology for consuming raw material. So they were buying extra inventory that they didn't necessarily need. They were consuming it out of uh, chronological order, and they really had a lot of open, you know, open sacks within the warehouse. So what we did was we created a unit of measure for them called the scoop. We created a location within their facility called a partials room. And in the partials room, we put plastic buckets with scoops in them so that the uh, system routes things from a raw material, so it takes the oldest or it takes the nearest to a fire lot, it routes it automatically to a partials bin once it's been opened up, and then the location on the pick ticket for production, if there are partials available for them in the partials room, it will actually take the picker into the partials room and tell them how many scoops of a particular raw material or a particular ingredient that it needs to go into the production batch. So it's consuming partials before it goes back and opens up new bags. It's an automated feature in the system that simply takes place transparently behind the scenes without the individual picker really having to concern themselves with the location. So again, there are cases where you're going to present us with challenges in your business, and we're going to turn around and turn that into an opportunity for you to save time, money, and to simplify things within your enterprise resource and planning system. Uh, another one that I like to talk about is desserts of distinction. This is a disassembly operation. So desserts of distinction is uh, a marketing-based organization primarily selling over the Internet and, so is, or, and through catalogs. So if you wanted to buy a chocolate lover's cheesecake, desserts of distinction would take six types of cheesecake. It would cook them. It would then disassemble them. It would take rolls of paper, and it would cut slips of paper to set between each cheesecake, and it would reassemble it as whatever type of cheesecake met that particular promotion. So, again, a disassembly job and taking six finished goods, disassembling them, and reassembling them as six different finished goods. So the system needed to manage that process, but additionally there was a black hole in inventory because the amount of paper that was being consumed between each one of these different pieces of cheesecake uh, was an intangible number that had to be evaluated at the end of each closing period. So instead of knowing exactly how much I consumed in paper on a particular machine, how much I consumed in paper on a particular shift, or how much I consumed in paper on a particular batch, I would have to lump that information together on a quarterly basis and then spread that cost out. So there was no way to identify if a shift, if an individual, if a process or an individual machine was actually consuming more paper than another, there was no way to evaluate the imperfections in the process because they basically had to spread the cost out evenly across everything. So these are the types of things that Batchmaster, again, seem like complex issues, but we're going to very easily help you overcome these things. So as you start hearing these stories and as you're talking to your sales reps and to myself, be thinking of these types of challenges and make sure you bring those up as issues because we want to help you out in solving those problems. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure that your sales reps have gone through what enterprise resource and planning is, but there inevitably is someone on every call who is new to the term or hasn't really been given a full induction into ERP. So I'd like to just very quickly go through this model so that everybody understands what we're looking at today. Enterprise resource and planning is the culmination of about 40 years' worth of good manufacturing practices and the software systems that supported them. So if you go back, uh, if you got in your Wayback Machine and went to the, you know, the birth of uh, enterprise software, what you would find is sales order systems, which stood independently. Uh, you would find warehouse systems, which stood independently. You would find accounting systems, which stood independently. And then you would find um, you know, uh, different types of ancillary applications that took care of different pieces of the manufacturing process. So you'd have a recipe management system that generated a batch ticket, but that's all that it did. 
you'd have a sales order system which generated an invoice, but that's all that it did. You'd have an accounting system where you had to go manually enter all of these different transactions into it in order to balance your ledgers. Enterprise resource and planning really is the culmination of all those things rolled into a single software package. So now instead of having to manually double enter things, uh, what you enter in one department automatically transcends into the ledgers or the, uh, or the logs of the other departments that need to see that data. So I'm going to take a quick break and ask if there's any questions at this point. Uh, again, you want to hit star six to unmute yourself because the next section is actually going to be the product demonstration. Any questions? Okay, uh, one of the things I want to touch on is that there is more than you're going to see today available to demonstrate in Bashmaster. I'm really not going to touch on any of the ancillary applications like advanced product, production scheduling, warehouse management, electronic data interchange, uh, product lifecycle management, that's sample management. Some of you may be familiar with that term, uh, allergen management supply chain management, and statistical forecasting. All of those are extra applications that integrate seamlessly into Batchmaster. Uh, we have those available for you, but they're not a part of this one-hour short demonstration today. Okay, so before I go forward, I want to just talk about the type of transactions that we're going to see today, and we're going to start at the top left-hand corner of this diagram. Uh, in Batchmaster, Sales orders are received. Uh, the system itself goes in, checks to see if there's stock available. If it has stock available, obviously, we can progress that through inventory out to the dock, invoice the customer, and receive a payment. That's a simple uh, sell from stock model, but unfortunately, we know that that's not always the case for most process manufacturers, especially if you're trying to do just-in-time manufacturing. So, as we check stock, we may need to either plan via a forecast or through a master production scheduling system, or we may need to expedite if the customer or the order is important enough to get something into production. Uh, once it's in production, we're going to check inventory to see if we have raw materials. If the system does not have raw materials, we're going to automatically generate purchase orders, which can then be received and paid for through the financial modules. Uh, if we have a long enough lead time, we can use our material requirements and planning engine to make sure that those raw materials show up at the dock just in time for the production run. Now, everything that we do is based off bills of material. And the bill of material is the culmination of the formula, its packaging items, and the instructions in order to make the finished good or the item. So Batchmaster has multi-level bills of material. So if you have, let's take something very simple, uh, if you make a powder, that powder then gets put as part of a wet blend. That wet blend then goes into some sort of, um, let's say, a uh, recipe that then would be cooked off. And then if that recipe uh, is cooked off and then packaged, and that package is then cased, all of those different levels are levels of the bill of material that Batchmaster understands as individual work orders. So when you look look at a run in Batchmaster, you can look at everything at once, or you can look at the individual steps as individual work orders. Either way, Batchmaster will handle it seamlessly, allow you to capture the results in the production batch entry screens, and then again, send that out to inventory, invoice the customer, and receive your payment. Any questions on what we're looking at here? Okay. Another way that uh, a lot of customers like to look at this is as a circle of life. And we talk about circle of life because we really want to go from, you know, something starting to something ending. And in looking at that type of model, at the center of everything is really inventory. Now, there's something that you won't see today, and that's called an item master. And it, whether you're looking at batch master or generic off-the-shelf software or at another process manufacturing solution, all of us have item masters, and the item masters are where we enter the critical data about the items that allow us to capture later on all the operational information we need to accomplish all of our compliance goals, all our regulatory goals, all of our quality goals. So, for instance, 
when I define a raw material, I tell it what tests I run when I receive that. If I define a finished good, I tell it what the finished good weight is, the quality of that product when I ship it. Uh, if I'm talking about an intermediate, I may want to define what my carrying cost is for holding that in stock. All of those things become part of the item masters. So when we talk about inventory, there are a number of different things that are crucial to the way Batch Master handles inventory. Number one is, if you have a standard operating procedure or a quality control uh, procedure that you want to place for a given item, whether it's a raw material, intermediate, or a finished good, you define that at the item level. You also can define things by location. So a typical Batch Master customer could have multiple locations, they could have a raw materials inventory in one physical location. They could have a production facility somewhere else. They might even have a third party holding inventory for them. They might even have virtual locations within their facility where they hold consigned inventory, which is something that has someone else's label on it or is someone else's packaging or even someone else's raw materials that they're going to use to contract manufacture a finished good. All of that is accomplished through the use of location. So a very common scenario for a Batchmaster customer is I have a I have corrugated box and the same corrugated box comes in from a vendor. But you know, some of that corrugated box resides in the customer owned inventory and it has a zero dollar value that I'm not going to pay taxes on, and some of that resides within my own packaging inventory and it has a value associated to it that I need to take into consideration when I go into the costing module. Some of the other things in inventory that we focus on, this is the point at which we capture those physical properties of raw materials. So if you're a food manufacturer, here's where we get the nutritional facts of a raw material or an ingredient that later on will flow into a finished good. If you're doing cosmetics, like I know someone on the call is talking about, this is where you capture, capture the chemical or physical properties of the raw material so that you can go back and get an ingredient statement. So formulation is the very first thing in inventory that we focus on. We're going to take a look at the R&D modules here in just a minute. We'll also discuss how a bill of materials allows us to model each step of the process. And then we'll talk about lock control a little bit later on. We actually are going to run a lot recall. We'll show you the uh, inventory count facilities that are within Batchmaster. And then we'll talk about the critical reports that you'll get out of inventory. Now, before we go into the inventory demonstration, what I really want to do first is just give everyone a quick tutorial. And I apologize, my connection looks like it has popped out. So if you give me just one second, I just have to log back in briefly.
look up, delete, and copy, as well as VCR play buttons to go to the next and last record in the set. So right now I'm looking at all sales orders. And if I wanted to drill in and look at all sales orders, let's say I wanted to find a specific order, here's the status of the orders. If I click on that column header, I can sort everything by status. Or if I click on order date, I can sort everything by order date. If I wanted to locate order number 10, I could say, show me everything that contains is greater than, less than, or equal to. Or I can even look by different column headers to try and find the data that I'm looking for. So here I'll say anything that contains text of 10, and it'll take me directly to that. Now, the nice thing here is that I have a number of different utilities available to me in addition. So here's our help. If I get lost, I can simply go directly to the screen that I'm in. It'll take me to each of the tabs in that screen. I can click on that link, and it'll tell me exactly what the system's looking for me to input at any given time. So as an end user, the system's fairly intuitive in taking me directly to the help that I need without having to pick up the phone and call support. Now that being said, at the same time, there are also a number of common tips for each screen. So for instance, if I'm in sales order, I may want to, uh, let's take a look at here, I want to, may want to view the history of selling this item to this customer. So here's all the orders, and for each of the orders, here's the line items that were on that order. Let's say I want to look at the inventory for this item. And so now it shows me all my locations. It shows me all my lots. It shows me when those lots expire, uh, how many of those lots are in quarantine, and what's available currently, and if those are committed where they are committed to. And by the way, if I want to drill into that information, I can just click on any of those links, and it takes me directly to those commitments. Now, these are common specifically to the sales order entry process. So as I jump to purchasing, everything to the right of help is going to change. And in some cases, you'll see the buttons extend all the way out to the end. And that's because there are lots of common utilities for this particular screen or process that we want to make easily accessible to the end user. So, for instance, here again in sales, I've got contracts. I've got the ability to recalculate based off of price breaks. I've got the ability to uh, put sales Should orders on right. hold. Depending on what goes, it depends what it's going into. Yeah, so if I'm in sales, I see a bunch of utilities specific to sales. If I'm in purchasing, I see a bunch of utilities specific to purchasing. So you're exactly right. Everything to the left remains the same. It's common, no matter what you're doing. Everything to the right will be dynamic from screen to screen. And we're going to go into sales some more. I really just wanted to use this as an opportunity to show off the sales order entry screen, or show off the functionality of the product. So the next thing we're going to do is we go back to our presentation. That's where it's supposed to be. Yep, exactly. Make it as easy as possible for the end user so they don't have to guess, right? with the lot traceability information, 
uh, inventory valuation, so based off of LIFO, FIFO, average, standard, or last cost, which I've set up for the item, exactly what's the value of that item today. You'll have pending transaction reports, so you can see all of the inventory moves. And then within Batchmaster, you'll have the ability to run a physical count simply by setting up a prep, telling the system what you want to count, and then going into the system, evaluating which lots are actually on hand for any given item, and then as you count that item, being able to update the quantity for that item and have that information flow back through to the system. Any questions on the inventory management roles? Okay, uh, the one thing that I do want to show you before we move further on this is the inventory dashboard. This is an invaluable tool for almost every customer. The inventory dashboard is one of about seven different dashboards that are management modules, give you the ability to come into Batchmaster and really understand what you have in stock. So I can go and I can 
take that report and I can walk it into a management meeting. Now, this type of management dashboard you'll see appear in sales, you'll see it appear in purchasing, in production, in quality control, and in inventory. So, again, I wanted to give you a bit of a tutorial on how these management dashboards work. Any questions about what you're seeing there? Okay, great. So next we're going to move into R&D and planning. You'll see what Batchmaster started out as 25 years ago, which is a formula management module. And then we'll talk about version control. We'll talk about modeling the formula to a work center so that you can get some rough cut capacity information out of the system. And then we'll also discuss implementing forecasts for the production of the item and all of the reports that you need to get out of R&D. As we jump back into Batchmaster, we're going to go into our manufacturing workspace. And under laboratory, we're going to go directly to our physical property analysis. And we're going to take a look at... Formula, what I want to do 
is I want to make some changes. And actually, let me go back. I think I want to go to the formula just before this. Hi, Rob. It's great. Are you at the airport? Oh, my God. <laughs> Trying to find a particular recipe that I was familiar with. I apologize for the delay here. You had a morning appointment, so I came back proposing it something late, proposing something this after the doctor's appointment, but he came back and he said I was fine. Like I thought there was no option really. No, you know what? I figured out what the problem was. Okay. So I'm looking at pie crust. Or actually, this is pizza crust. And in this particular formulation, I want to get to a different target goal for my nutritional fat. So right now I'm looking at flour. And if I want to see the material properties of flour, I can simply click the material property button. It'll tell me what my t protein, my carbohydrate, my energy, all of the different ingredients, uh, or all the different ingredient statements that I'll need to generate my FDA compliant list for each of the individual raw materials that I plan on using in a batch. In this case, what I want to do is I want to make an adjustment to flour. So if I come over here to protein, so first I want to mark this line. So I'm going to hit the check button, and it places an X next to that line. I'll go to protein, and we're going to change it to 38,000, and if you'll notice the quantity required of that individual raw material automatically gets updated. Also, let's talk about if I want to change the uh, overall system weight and volume. So let's say I want to go to, I've got all kinds of stuff in here. So if I want to take any one of these individual physical properties, and I want to back solve that into the formula itself, let's say for instance here, I take this and make an adjustment, it'll automatically go back and adjust that into a single item, or I can go back and I can make that adjustment to all items. So let's say here's It'll take all associated items and make the adjustment to the actual raw material in order to get to the target goal. Now, some of the other things that you'll notice here are costing tab. I can capture, let's say, if I heat something up and I lose a percentage of that to uh, into the air. Or let's say if I'm making something sticky and a good portion of it sticks to the side of the batch. I can predefine what I anticipate as my loss for that batch and the system will then tell the production picking system to overpick for production in order to account for that yield or for that final goal. Uh, additionally here, we can define fixed costs, setup costs, and variable costs for labor and for overhead, so that if I want to tell the system in advance that I expect this to consume three hours of my line leader's time, I can then go back during production and I can capture uh, it only took him 2.5, and then I can evaluate that information on a constant basis going forward. Any questions about what you're seeing here in formula management? Okay. The last thing that we'll talk about is quality control. Uh, within Batchmaster, I've predefined a laundry list of different types of QC tests that I'd like to run. And each of these tests is stored in a database. For each individual formula, I define thresholds for those tests, so I can set up deltas of acceptability. I can have something as a pass-fail test, or I can simply have an alphanumeric test where I capture information based off of what my target goals are. 
And then at the point of production, the system will require that that information gets completed, as well as it'll flow that information into things like a certificate of analysis for the shipping of product. Okay, so if we jump back to our presentation, uh, some of the things that you'll be uh, curious to see as we go forward with the evaluation process, this is a master formula. Uh, later on, this will look very similar to a batch ticket. Every customer who comes to Batchmaster has a different format in which they want to see their formula reports and their batch ticket. Just know that whatever your format is, the data is there, and we have the ability to copy your existing process or even show you some examples of other customers' batch tickets, and you may want to inherit or adopt some of those procedures as well. Uh, there are comparison tools where I can stack versions of the formula next to each other. You'll notice the electronic signature information with revision date, time, reason, and user, so that I have the audit trail to see what the differences are and why the changes were made. We talked a little bit about rough cut capacity. This is a screen where I can tell the system what machines I own and what formulas I make and how fast I can move those formulas through those different machines. Later on, what this will do is it will allow the system to provide a plan for me so that I can see which machines are consuming how much product and what products are running across those machines and make decisions as to uh, replanning of systems, replanning of the order of production, all based off of my capacity utilization. So any questions about formula management before we move into purchasing? Okay, today in the purchasing modules, we'll take a look at a dashboard like we did for inventory. We'll talk about uh, the standard operating procedures necessary to receive product. We'll talk about the uh, decision support tools that are in place for purchasing as well as accepting product. We'll talk about vendors, their, uh, the quality of their product and how we handle different vendors with the different quality of product. We'll go through the sourcing process. We'll talk about the material requirements and planning engine, which allows us to do just-in-time purchasing, and as well as the quality control modules for receiving, the ability to capture critical vendor information by lot, and then again, we'll take a look at a list of reports. Okay, so as we go to back to the distribution workspace, and we're going to go into purchasing. First thing we'll look at is the purchase dashboard. Now, I haven't made any purchases today, so what I'll do is I'm going to go back and take a look at some purchase history. And I'll use this as a basis to do some interrogation of the system. Okay, so if we take a look at any one of these given purchase orders, you know what? I just want to go back a little further. Peter, I'm too, please. Now, if I wanted to actually just look at that order and see what order number 239 included, there's a full 
having the most common utilities at our fingertips. So let's look at, let me pull up one more order here. Look at order number 257. So I'm going to drill down a specific order here. We're going to talk about some of the different functionality that's available to the purchasing agent. Okay. So you'd say option one and the standard option two is uh, Okay, so as I'm looking at this purchase order, in this particular case we're looking at vanilla. And you know, we've talked about the common utilities available to look up orders on the left. Uh, here in purchasing I have the ability to cancel an order, view the history of this particular item, the ability to view production utilization of this particular item. So this isn't something that's getting used on a regular basis. I can uh, toggle units to measure so I can see other units that it's available in. I can view any contracts that I might have for the purchase of this item. I can uh, go in and look at vendor specific information. I can look at any price breaks that might be available. I can go and view any discounts that I've received in the past. I can look up inventory for this item if I have any on hand. So again, all of these things specific to being a purchasing agent, I need to have available to me uh, at my fingertips as I'm going through the process. So the purchase order dashboard basically shows me everything that's scheduled for today or everything that's scheduled for the period that I look at. I can come in, I can evaluate those things, I can make modifications to the orders if I need to, I can view all the critical information regarding those items if I need to, and then the system gives me the ability to generate the purchase order. And from there I can simply email, fax, or send that in whatever format that I need directly from the system. So in this case I'm going to send it through Outlook as an Acrobat document. And it'll automatically link directly into my Outlook and allow me to dispatch this order from the system. Any questions about what you're seeing there? Okay, so very briefly we'll just take a look at some of the critical reports. Uh, this is the material requirements and planning screen where you see buy item and location, the default unit of measure, what is planned, for what period, for which vendor, and then the ability to firm up orders, the ability to group those orders together, and the ability to generate purchase orders directly from the system. All of this is based off of the setup data that you provide. So what is your planning time frame? Uh, when do you want to purchase items? When do you want to confirm items? As well as which items are part of a greater forecast. All of that information flows into the MRP engine, which Bash Master will then make suggestions for what you should be buying on any given day. Some of the critical reports you'll get out of the system, material receipt notes, vouchers for your vendor to receive payments, receivables documents for audit capabilities, Vendor performance analysis for deciding which vendors that you want to continue to do business with, as well as which vendors that you can uh, leverage for discounts in contract. So any questions on purchasing before we move to production? Okay, as part of today's demonstration, we will look at the production or batch entry screens in Batchmaster. Uh, we'll talk about just-in-time manufacturing as well as the expediting of orders. We'll go through some replanning scenarios. We'll capture quality control data. Uh, we'll show you how to account for the closing of batches in both finished goods as well as work in process. And then
then we'll again take a look at critical reports from production. Separate modules, or whether it's also another thing. But separate modules or different products, but they say, you know. So again, to our manufacturing workspace. I don't know whether they, they mentioned, you know. They're offering Batchmaster and they're working with Sage. On we'll the look at a because this is for clients demo. So they, they will not tell you all those things. Production so dashboard. On that yeah, whether it's separate. integrated with the yeah. Appack or not. Yeah, yeah. So it does. It does integrate. Uh, they have clients even in Canada. Again, have, because I haven't yeah. started anything yeah. today, we'll go back in time yeah. a bit. Because it's in December, actually. Oh, wonderful. And the formula management. And we'll take a look at the production so schedule. Because this is nice dashboard. Yeah. You can you can select the formulas. You can see. So what this does is it tells us by batch number exactly which items are to be produced. how much grams of flow you need. We can expand that out and see the status of each of the items in that work order. We can see red when something is a critical material, which means it's out of stock. Yellow when it's been allocated. Blue is the actual finished good that we plan to manufacture. Now the most common way to take a look at this dashboard is by process cell. So by machine, show me which items go first, will, second, third, fourth, and fifth of the day. The system will set up a work schedule for you. And again, uh, if I want to let's take a look at critical batches. So let's look at everything that I'm missing materials for today within the schedule. system automatically abbreviates the list, and then again, if I expand those out, it'll show me exactly which items are critical for any of those given batches. Now, the nice thing about any of these, which I don't know if you've noticed up here at the top, but you can save these, so let's say, I'm going to save that as critical batches, and now go back to this, so let's open that dashboard back up. I'll go to my critical batches and just tell it what time frame that I want to look at. And it'll apply that same criteria for me. So in production, Batchmaster provides us with a work order or a batch ticket. So if we go to uh, the production dashboard, we can drill directly into batch ticket, or we can go to the batch ticket screen directly. So, Mr. Gonzalez. Hey. What in? What's up? I'm going to pull up a particular work order real uh, quick. Okay, I need to talk to Rob. See. No, no. No, I am not all of the time. I spoke to Rob. He's going to send me more information. So, when I jump tomorrow, we have a kind of rough And if I go into the formula, I'll see all the formula items. If I want to, let's say I want to dilute this formula and add something to it, I can add. If I want to remove an item, I can remove it. If I want to update the quantity actually being used in production, I can do that. So if I use more than more or less than I had assumed I was going to need, if I go to the packaging and let's say I manage to break packaging, so now I'm going to use 325 uh, of this particular cover, and under finished goods, let's say I overproduced and I made 110. All that information specific to the batch that I'm running, so it's taken a formulation, it's sized it to the production batch, it's given me the capability to enter the actuals as opposed to what I assumed, and then additionally, I can come in and I can enter in any associated cost to the batch. So let's say here I put in two hours of packaging. All this information then becomes part of the final record for the cost of this batch. And at this point, I have a couple of different choices. Uh, if I need to, I can always come back and I can resize the batch. I can allocate the raw materials. Or I can partially allocate just the few raw materials that I know that I have on hand. Uh, in this scenario, I want to say 
I found out that I'm missing a few raw materials. So with the availability of limiting materials, the system will then take all of the raw materials that I'm short on, and it will automatically resize the batch based off of me just hitting the finish key. Some other scenarios, I may have one raw material. Let's say I want to size up the batch based off the fact that I want to use um, only 1,000 pounds of that because I'm going to use the other 450 somewhere else. Or let's say uh, physical property. Let's say I want to use sugar in a particular batch, and I don't have sugar in this batch, so let's say protein, and I want to get to a physical property for this batch for protein, I can enter that in and the system will automatically resize all the ingredients based off of that goal. In this case, what we're going to do is just go take a look at the batch ticket. So if we go to print, we'll take a look at the work order. Here's the end items that are going to be made. Here's the container that we're going to need. Uh, all the manufacturing steps listed in order, as well as all the handling information up at the top. And again, this format is really uh, your discretion. However you want the batch ticket to look is however it gets implemented. So if I'm done with this particular batch, I can go to the batch close screen. Uh, if you'll remember from our conversations earlier, we actually were producing a couple of different sales orders with different finished goods. So I can go in and I can adjust partial closes. So trucks at the dock, they're ready to pick up this particular order. I can go in and I can partially close just that piece of the batch. Or I can close the entire batch at once. Now before I can release the batch, the system has quality control implemented. And it's going to need to make sure that I complete these tests before I can release the batch. So at the bottom here, you'll see alphanumeric test, pass-fail test, and numeric value test. Here where you actually capture the information. Just left, no? And mark if you actually fail. So an inspection sheet can get printed directly from the system with the results of each of the tests. This can be used as a certificate of analysis for the finished goods that you produce. He's in parking lot, that's why he doesn't reception. So again, batch tickets with lot tracking information is obviously a very big piece of what our production modules allow you to produce. Uh, this is actually the master production scheduling screen where you can see based off of all of your presettings, what items should be produced for what reason on which day. This is an advanced production scheduling whiteboard where I can actually move around those selections. So let's say if I had a line go down and I want to move everything to Blender 3, I can actually drag and drop each of these jobs, uh, re reallocate each of the cleaning tasks, and evaluate multiple what-ifs or what the schedule would look like and when I would be able to get the jobs done based off of any changes that might take place. Additionally, the system gives me critical material reports, letting me know when there are items missing. So I can look in the dashboard like we saw earlier, or I can put together critical materials reports to send to purchasing. There are a number of different what-if reports available in the system. This is the most common, max producible by stock. So if you have employees who are sitting around with nothing to do, you have raw materials, and you want to make something in order to maximize your plant, you can simply say, for a given formula, tell me the most that I can produce by stock today, and you can start putting those resources to work. Any questions on the production screens that we just saw? Okay, finally, we're going to move into sales order management. We looked a little bit at sales orders earlier. We'll talk more about pricing and visibility into production. We'll discuss compliance documentation. And finally, we'll take a look at critical reports. So I'll switch back to distribution. And again, uh, just like before, you do have a dashboard with all the critical information.
information related to sales. So this shows me for every single sales order uh, what items were on that particular shipment. And then if I want to drill directly into those, I can simply click on the links next to them. It'll take me directly to the sales order. I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. Here's what I wanted. So it'll take me directly into the sales order, and I can print that here from the screen. That's a canceled order. It doesn't want to let me print it. standard comments that I want to apply to the actual sales order. 
uh, being able to enter into who the salesperson is and later understand what commissions to pay that person. All of that flows directly through the system. All the bill to and ship to information, what documents need to get printed along with the sales order, as well as the totals, and that's just not totals of the item, but totals of discounts, as well as total weighted weight of the product in order to know what to charge for shipping. Finally, I'll just look at what contracts that I have with this customer so I can make sure that they're consuming as much product as they've agreed to and that we're giving them the same price that we discussed in the past. Any questions about what you've seen so far? Okay, the last thing that we're going to do is a lot recall. Now again, there's lots of things in Batchmaster that we haven't shown you today. Uh, what I want to do is show you all of the highlights and then let you folks come back to us with additional questions that you might have. So the first thing that I want to do is a lot explosion. The lot explosion is what allows me to understand which products at which levels were used. So let's look at something simple. And in this particular example, we're going to look for uh, I had sugar in a silo for about two weeks, and I don't know exactly which lots were contaminated. So, and let's take a look at a range of lots. So let's do lot 22 through 24. No, not a problem. Okay, so uh, we're just trying to get the lot explosion uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, for the lot recall, but uh, with the exception of that, we're pretty much at the end here. Okay, any questions, anybody, while well, um, still doing that? Don't forget to unmute your phone. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, uh, you... See, you have, uh, we talked about it, you have an interface to QuickBooks, but it looks like you would not use, uh, well, then, any of the sales orders, invoicing. That's correct. Our integration. QuickBooks. Right. We are, um, we would use the accounts payable and receivables modules, and that's also the general ledger. 